Welcome to the weekly live stream from Scalar Learning where we cover SAT problems straight from the source, straight from Khan Academy to get you ready for the SAT math section as best as possible. Uh, we were supposed to do yesterday, however I was out of town, I was in San Francisco yesterday so I'm very sorry for that delay. But we're back today and we are running through angles, arc lengths, and trig function problems just coming kind of down the line from the Khan Academy uh, curriculum setup here. So without further ado, let's do it now just as a quick reminder if this is your first time i'm solving these problems for the first time live on camera which is part of the fun so you never know what's going to happen if you find this stuff helpful please click that like button but if you're preparing for the sat and you really want to do your best make sure to hit that subscribe button because we got live streams coming out every week and a new schedule unfolding in the next month which is going to be really great with even more educational and preparation content all right let's do it so first we have this circle, we have 220 degrees. So it says in the diagram at left, circle C has a radius of six feet. Which of the following describes the approximate measure of the arc length? So hold on, so as a radius of six feet, which of the following best approximates the measure of the arc length of S? Okay, so what this comes down to is basically, basically this arc length, it, you can see that it's kind of part of the circumference. Circumference will be going all the way around. So first of all, what is the circumference of, and this is a no calculator, so that actually kind of makes it hard. What's the circumference of this whole thing? Well, the circumference is again 2 pi r. So 2 pi radius. Radius in this case is 6. So if this were 6, multiply that 2, and we got 12 pi for the circumference. Now how do we use this arc, this angle here, to calculate the arc length of S. Well, if it was the entire circle, it'd be 12 pi, but it's only a portion of the circle. And how much, what fraction of the circle? Well, it's 220 over 360. That arc length tells us what fraction this arc length is of the entire circle. So 220 over 36 times this will give us the answer. So let's simplify because this is a non-calculated question. So we gotta cross off those zeros. 22 over 36, I'm gonna divide them both by two. We get 11 over 18 times 12 pi. These guys can simplify, divide them both by six and we get two and three, uh, and then multiply across and we get 22 pi over three. Okay, so let's approximate. I'm gonna say that since pi and three are close, they'll nearly cancel out. Maybe it'll be a little bit higher, but they'll almost cancel out. And then, so we're, we should be looking close to 22 as our final answer. 23 is the best answer, and it's correct. All right, next. In a circle with center C and radius four meters, a central angle of X, X degrees, uh, intercepts an arc of 20 meters as shown in the diagram to the left. Okay, there it is. So this whole thing here is 20. Uh, rounded to the nearest degree, which of the following best approximates the value of x? Okay, we're solving for x. So let's do this. Now I'm gonna clear the screen. Once again, we're starting with circumference and we calculate circumference by two pi r. So two pi r, in this case, radius is four. So this is four. Multiplied against the two, we get eight pi for the circumference. Okay, now here's the interesting part, right? Once again, to get the value of this arc length, we say the value of the angle over 360 times the circumference equals the arc length. But in this case, they give us the arc length. So boom, we just plug it in right there. What are we solving for? We're solving for x. So now let's make this as easy as possible. So I can multiply both sides by 360, but that's going to get a bit hectic. Let's try and simplify a little bit first because I believe 8 goes into 3. This is no calculator again. 8 goes into 360. Hold on, that's 40 plus 5, 45 times. So if you want to verify, you can do like a quick thing. 8 times 5 is 40. Carry the 4. 32 plus 4 is 36. So this simplifies, this simplifies. So this becomes x just pi over 45 equals 20. <clears throat> now it's a little easier. Multiply that side by 45, or both sides by 45. We get x pi equals 900, and then we divide by pi, divide by pi. So again, I'm thinking as x here, if we're dividing by, oh wait, which of the following best approximates the value of x? So 
wait a minute. That seems too low. Because oh no, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. I'm sorry. So now uh, that that seems right. So now we're dividing by three roughly. So it's about about 300. Okay. But the question, the problem is we got two answers right in that zone. We got 286 and 304. So the question is, is it going to be above 300 or below 300? Well, since pi, if it were 3, it'd be 300 if pi were 3. But pi is greater than 3. So it's just like if you were dividing by a number, any number greater than 3, like you divide by 100, that's going to be a, that's going to be smaller than 300. Even 3.14 is going to be a little smaller than 300 because you're dividing by a slightly larger number. So in this case, I'm going to say my best answer is 286. We're going to go down. All right, correct. Next question. Which of the following is the value of sine 5 pi to the 6? Sine, whoops, sine 5 pi to the 6. No calculator. OK. All right, this is a little trickier. So the way that I'm going to think about this is uh, you may have these values memorized, and that's fine. I always like to work in degrees and not radians. The way we convert back to degrees is we multiply by 180 over pi. If I want to go to radians, I do the opposite. I multiply by pi over 180. We usually know that this is correct because <clears throat> the pi's are going to cancel out. Uh, I'll divide both of these by 6, and I get 30 and 1. So now we're multiplying across, and it's 150 degrees. Okay. So now we have 150 degrees, and we're going to look at it. So this is actually a pretty complicated question without a calculator. So I'm going to do it the best I can here. When you're talking about 150 degrees or basically greater than 90, so here's 90, 150 would be another 60. Okay, We have to look at this angle down here. All right. So we're really not just taking sine of 150. We're actually taking sine. If we go 150, what's this distance left? It's 30 degrees. So we're really talking about a 30, 60, 90 right triangle. And we're taking sine of this. So if you remember with a 30, 60, 90, the relationship that we have is the smallest side is 1, the greatest side is 2, and this side is square root 3. Now we can kind of figure this out. And we can see that sine of 30 is 1 over 2. It's opposite over hypotenuse, which is 1 half. Um, we don't even have to think about whether or not it's positive or negative, because that could have been a curveball if they put positive 1 half and negative 1 half. But just FYI, in this quadrant, sine is also positive, because sine is, corresponds with y. I hope that made sense. That may not have been the fastest way to solve this, but that's what I do often is I'll create a triangle. Okay, now same thing, tangent of pi thirds. So this is new because they didn't used to have these types of questions, like this hardcore trigonometry. It's usually related to a triangle, not just straight up angles. But this I think is gonna be easier because this is gonna be in the first quadrant. So let's do the same thing. Let's convert back to degrees. Pi thirds times 180 over pi. Cross those out. Multiply across. We get 180 divided by 3, which is 60. So that's really nice because we have, we know now we have a 60, 30, 60, 90 again. So why do I know that? Because we're talking about a right triangle. If this is 60 degrees, this has to be 30. It has to, the 30 and the 60 have to add up to 90. And now we're taking tangent of this. Well, once again, 30, 60, 90 means this side is 1, this side is 2, and this side is square root 3. So tangent is opposite over adjacent. So it's opposite over adjacent, which is square root 3 over 1, which is just square root 3. You could also learn these or remember these if you memorize the unit circle. If you memorize the unit circle, I, these are arguably way faster, not way faster, but a little bit faster. I don't know. So it's up to you if you want to do that. Uh, I'm totally fine, me personally, with knowing how to, if you just understand trigonometry and realize that it relates to triangles, you can pretty much decode these relatively quickly. So, but whatever your preference is. All right, next, which of the following is the value of the cosine of the angle shown above? Okay, same thing. 
you have it memorized, or you could just realize. This again makes a 30, 60, 90. 30, 60, 90, if we turn it into a triangle. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Let's fill in the values. 1, square root 3. Square root 3 is always opposite the 60, and then 2 here. So it would be adjacent over hypotenuse, which is square root 3 over 2. And that's it. Thank you guys for joining. I hope you found this helpful. Once again, if you did find this helpful and if you want to get the most out of your SAT preparation process, make sure to subscribe. We got new videos dropping every week. I'm going to try to do my absolute best to get you prepared for the next upcoming SAT for that math portion. And make sure to click that like button if you found it helpful. And last but not least, if you have a question, if something wasn't explained clearly and you want further explanation, please leave a comment below. I respond to every single comment. And I've had a lot of questions in the last few weeks, which have been great. So I always do my best to write a thorough response to hopefully clear up any misunderstandings. Thank you guys so much for joining, and I'll see you all next time. Take it easy.